Hey everybody, it's your boy Chili here, also known as Snurt. And we're back at it with the Hacker Rank interview preparation kit. We're gonna be flexing some algorithms and some data structures. It's gonna be a good time. So, what, what shall we look at today? Uh, we've done a few on arrays, we've done a dictionary and hash map boy. Let's, uh, I'm feeling greedy today, so let's, uh, let's check out some greedy algorithm stuff. I don't really have a super, you know, super clear definition of what a greedy algorithm is, personally. Uh, but, let's just try to solve them anyways. So, mm, not gonna do this one. This one seems kind of easy, I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at this one. It says medium. Success rate is 84.64%, which doesn't seem that hard at all. But might be, might be interesting, at least. So, you will be given a list of integers r and a single integer k and you must create an array length k from the elements r such that its unfairness is minimized and we'll call that array sub r and the unfairness of the array is calculated as the uh, the maximum value in the subarray minus the minimum value so what we want to do is we want to minimize the uh, the biggest difference between different elements in in our subarray. So we want to select, let me just, uh, let's bring up pictures, because pictures are good, right? So we've got a big array, it's got lots of values in it, and we want to select a subarray, choosing specific values out of here to create our subarray, such that the difference between the smallest value and the biggest value, that difference is the minimum possible. So we select these elements such that that uh, the biggest difference in here is the smallest that we could possibly get. Seems straightforward. Now, <clears throat> right away, if we look at let's look at what our uh, constraints are. So n, which is the size of the total array, the one that we're going to select our subarray from, is 10 to the 5. So it's 100,000 and k is anywhere between 2 and n. So, I mean, if we were to select n as 100,000 and k as half of that, 50,000, the number of subarrays that we could make would be an incredibly huge number. I'm not going to calculate it. I'm pretty sure it's it's going to be n, n choose k or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's combination, right? It's a very big number. So there's no way you're going to brute force this by, you know, selecting every possible combination and then testing it and then finding out the the minimum unfairness out of all combinations that's it's impossible it's not possible so we need to find a smarter way of doing this how are we going to do it well we want to minimize the difference uh, between elements in our subarray i mean a dumb a dumb idea let's start with a dumb idea so let's find the uh, the differences between all elements in the big array and then choose the two elements with the uh, the smallest difference. Put that in our subarray. Uh, okay. Well, if our subarray needs more than two, we'd have to fill it with other values, and that's going to be a problem because as soon as you put another value in here, the dis difference between this one and this one, or this one and this one, might be larger than the difference between these two, and that kind of ruins your selection there. So that means, let's say k is equal to four and you choose two elements to minimize, choose two elements out of here to minimize their difference. That means that the two elements that you choose must have at least two more elements between them because k needs to be four. And these values have to be between this value, let's say this is the smallest, and this value, this is the largest. Why? Well, because if they're between, then the maximum difference would still be these two. These ones wouldn't matter because they're between, right? Um, if they were outside, if the one that we choose is cho chose were less than this one, then that means that this difference would be bigger than this difference, and so our selected difference here wouldn't matter. Alright? Now this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to, to arbitrarily, you know, choose two out of here and then uh, try to fit our answer around that, but it does give us some ideas, because if we look at this, okay, so we need to choose two 
two values to minimize this difference with the constraint that they also have two values, at, at least two values in between here so that we can fill out our entire K of four. Now, if we want to select values such that the number of values in between them that are you know greater than this one and less than this one are a specific number how do we do that how do we guarantee that you know small number larger than this one will be here but it should be smaller than this one well that's just sorting right so if we think about things this way, even if we started with a really dumb idea, it can lead us to a better idea, and that idea is sorting. And honestly, like this is a no-brainer. Once once you see a problem, if you if you're familiar with you know solving these kinds of problems, uh, once you see a problem and they're like you want to minimize uh, the difference, you want you're dealing with maximums and minimums and stuff like that, you should immediately think, okay, sorting might be a good idea here. So a first really good step here, in my opinion, is to sort our input array so that the smallest value is here and the largest value is here. So let's say we've got, you know, like a bunch of values in our input array now. They're sorted from smallest to largest. And we want to make an output array of size 4. And we want to minimize the difference between the smallest element and the largest element. So how would we choose our values? I mean, obviously, if we chose a value from here, from this end of the array, and this end of the array, we'd have the biggest difference possible, since this is the largest value and this is the smallest value. So it's obviously a bad idea to choose values that are far away from each other in a sorted array. So we'd want to choose values that are close to each other. We want to choose the values that are the closest to each other. So we would want to choose a consecutive sequence of four values in our sorted array. Uh, and that would give us the smallest possible subarray. Now, obviously, any, any consecutive sequence of four is not going to be equal. You know, if, this, if the sequence goes one, two, three, four, uh, 69, one million, two million, or whatever, this, this four has a very big difference between the smallest and the largest, whereas if we choose this four, it's a very small difference. So, not all sequences are created equal. We have to choose the smallest one. Now, how many possible subsequences do we have? Considering that they have to be uh, you know, consecutive in order in this sorted array. Well, if our k is equal to 4, and let's say our n here is equal to 10, then we would have, you know, this is a possible one, 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 all the way to the end here. And... I don't know. I mean, if n is equal to 5... One, two, three, four, five. We would have two possible sequences. This one and this one. So our number of possible sequences is going to be n minus k plus one. Uh, with the condition that k cannot be less than n. Right. So that's not too bad, right? I mean, that's we have to basically check this many subsequences. And that is going to be, you know, on the order of n or k or whatever. It's going to be is going to be a linear operation. Now we got to sort this thing. That's going to be n log n. We got to evaluate this many subsequences, which on average, if k was half of n, um, you'd be like, you know, n over two. And then for each subsequence that we evaluate. What are we going to do? How do we evaluate the subsequences? Well, it's just the minimum value in the subsequence, uh, or the maximum value minus the minimum value. Uh, and so you could you could scan through and find the maximum and minimum, but that's dumb, right? Because the subsequences are already sorted. So the minimum is going to be here, the maximum is going to be here. So it's this minus this that gives you your uh, your unfairness quotient. And you just do that for every subsequence, and you find the one that has the smallest unfairness. So this is constant time. This is n over 2, so this is linear time. So your t 
time complexity is going to be n log n for this operation here. So let's do it. Let's solve the freaking problem, shall we? All right, first things first, I'm the realist, but we got to sort this thing. So sort r.begin, r.end, there you go. So now we've got our input array all sorted up. Uh, now, we're going to be searching for the smallest possible unfairness. So we're going to be doing minimum unfairness. So we're going to have some value to keep track of that. Call it unf. And we're going to initialize it to uh, numeric limits the maximum int possible. And then if we find any smaller than that, we just keep making it smaller, smaller and smaller until we've done, we've evaluated all the subsequences and then we return that value. So how do we do that? Well, let's use a for loop. I think I want to be looping here. We're going to use um, indexes here. We're not going to use iterators for this one. What is our iterate iteration index going to be? Well, we'll do the start of the range that we are examining. So what is that going to be? Well, it's going to loop from zero, index of the first element in the range. What is the last one we're going to be here? That's going to be here. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we want to loop basically from zero to six inclusive. So that's from zero to n minus k inclusive, which would be n minus k plus one exclusive. It's important, uh, important distinction to make there. So for our code, what's that going to look like? For size t i is equal to zero, and as long as i is less than n, which is r dot size minus k plus one i plus plus. So that's going to give us the range of the uh, the start indices for each of the subsequences that we're going to analyze. Now, for each of those subsequences, what are we doing? We are uh, we're finding the difference between the beginning and end of the sequence, and we're going to see if that is smaller than our current unfairness. So we want to find the minimum between the current unfairness and the unfairness of the subsequence that we're examining, which is going to be uh, r at i, so the end of the sequence is going to be i plus k minus 1, right? And from that we want to subtract r at i. That gives us the unfairness of that subsequence, we compare that with the, un the current minimum unfairness and update that to get the new minimum. And then we're done. Return that unfairness. That should be it. Unless I'm missing something, which, you know, 50-50 chance that happening at any given day. But let's uh, run the code, see if we got any syntax errors. All right, so it compiled and it passed all the sample test cases. Now the moment of truth. Do we, uh, do we pass all of the normal test cases? And it's telling us we did pass them all. And yep. We have successfully solved our fifth code challenge. Keep it up. So beautiful. There you go. There was a, uh, a quote unquote medium problem solved. It's not that hard, right? I mean, I did a little song and dance at the beginning, but as soon as I see that we're dealing with minimums and maximums and stuff, I'm already thinking in my head, is, am I gonna be able to sort this? And will that give me anything? And the answer is yes. It does give me something, it makes my life a lot easier. So the problem is, again, the, the time complexity just comes from the sorting and log in, which ain't too bad at all in many situations. But there you have it. You guys, you have any, uh, any ideas, any questions, any better solutions? You know, if it's something uh, simple, all by all means, hit me up in the comments. Interested to hear if you got any other ideas there, or if you want to discuss this any further, you can come into the Discord. Always, uh, always interested to talk to you guys about this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's gonna about do it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, helps a lot. But I will see you soon with some more coding challenges.